now we come to the uh, inaugural address by professor b mahadevan ji uh, we have been running late uh, unfortunately <laughs> apologies uh, professor uh, before i invite uh, him to speak here is a very brief introduction uh, professor b mahadevan is a professor of operations management at indian institute of management bangalore uh, where he has been teaching since 1992 he was formerly the vice chancellor of chinmaya vishwavidyapeeth kochi uh he has more than 23 years of wide ranging experience in teaching research consulting and, and academic administration at uh, iim bangalore and other reputed institutions such as uh, iit delhi uh, xlri jamshedpur professor mahadevan's research interests include researching the possibility of using ancient indian wisdom to address contemporary concerns spirituality in workplace and management paradigms from bhagavad gita he was a member of central sanskrit board an advisory body to the ministry of hrd uh, department of education on all sanskrit policy issues in the country uh, professor mahadevan has initiated the practical vedanta samvada through which he has taught several texts like dakshina murti stotram bhagavad gita and taittiriya upanishad he plays a very crucial role in guiding the activities of yoma linguistic labs foundation as a member of its advisory role we are very honored sir by your presence uh, uh, please go ahead and start your address thank you vagarta viva samprakta vagarta pratipattaye jagata pitaro vande parvati parameshwaro sada shiva samarambham shankara charya madhyamam asmada charya paryantam vande guru paramparam utesmriti purananam alayam karunalayam namami bhagavat pada shankaram loka shankaram shankaram shankara charyam केशवं बादरायनं सूत्रवाशिकृतो वन्दे भगवन्तो पुनः पुनः फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट इज माय प्रिविलेज इन फैक्ट आई एम वेरी ब्लेस्ड टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस फंक्शन फॉर टू रीजंस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टू स्पेंड द मॉर्निंग टाइम मे बी इन आवर और टू just on bhagavad shankaracharya is a great uh, blessing that one can ask for and the second reason is to have the anugraha bhashana of uh, shringeri jagadguru so i think my day is made for the, the my year is made i can wait for the next virtual uh, global oneness and shankara jayanti thank you for this opportunity and uh, uh, shringeri swamigal was saying during the course of his uh, bhashana anugraha bhashana that uh, you find answers to any question that you may have in shankara's works shankaracharya's works so i want to carry that uh, idea with uh, a particular thought see today we talk so much about uh, you know oneness we talk about uh, you know unity and diversity need for tolerance and everybody keeps talking about need for tolerance etc etc so i want to take this thought and understand what has been the greatest contribution of uh, adi shankar bhagavad pada is such a greatest uh, social thinker that one can ever imagine the greatest spiritual giant and what more we we need to ask for let's start from the reality the reality is world is full of contrasts and differences let's not uh, run away from this reality you know it can be in terms of gender nationality religion language and communication cultural norms are very different the tastes are different preferences attitude everything is different in fact uh, you know uh, in uh, panchadashi very nicely this is mentioned you know you have three types of beda swagata beda sajatiya beda vijatiya beda 
See, Sogata Beda means you know, if you take a human being, the eyes are different from the ears, ears are different from the upper limbs, upper limbs are different from lower limbs. So it's called Sogata Beda. In one's own uh, constructive physical structure, there are differences. Then you have Sajati Beda. You, know, you say, I am a, you know, Indian, I am a, you know, American. This is a mango tree, this is a neem tree. It is a plant kingdom, but we keep seeing differences. So that is called Sajati Beda. And then you have Vijati Beda. You know, uh, uh, the dog family is different from the cat family. Cat family is different from human beings. Human beings is different from the elephants and amphibians. So we all must understand the empirical reality in which we are all living is full of differences, contrasts. So in fact, the entire science, scientific thinking thrives on this. You know, we use it in our daily chores. Uh, this is the bedrock of all mundane activities. I mean, we all know that. And these differences that we talk about operates at four levels for us. At the first level, it is a work enabler. As I told you, the empirical world of transactions requires differences. The Veda is very, very important. The Veda Bhava is very important. Right? And that is the basis of power of analysis. That's why science is riding on it. You know, to develop insights, to, you know, do selective efforts, to make improvements, progress in material life. All of them require these differences. Then at the third level, it manifests in, in terms of sense of protection. I have to take care of myself. I am different from you. Indians are different from Americans. So, you know, then you have to take care of oneself, near and dear. At a societal level, we have to take care of a society. The governments have to take care of uh, their own interests. So there is a feeling of selfishness, fear and competition. All these will manifest. And then at the highest level of these differences, you know, we may get blindfolded because, you know, there is this class consciousness, there is this... Uh, so we start, in a very practical sense, we slowly start losing the vision of oneness. That is what it is. And we all know, on account of this, you know, there are all kinds of adversarial reactions. Uh, we see different kinds of behaviors, fights, discrimination, aggression. History is full of such episodes. So now the central question to us is how do we handle this? How do we manage this? Because wherever we see, we see those differences. And uh, so one of the questions, this is a problem of the society, so to think at one level. How do we approach this problem? How do we solve this problem? Now I want to, for a moment, take how the current approach to address this problem, you know, you call it as a modernistic or socialistic communism approach, whatever you want to call it, it rides on two basic principles. First principle is all are equal. And the second principle is all are same. Equal and same, slight differences, but I'm still using two different words. Therefore, to address this so-called uh, contrast and differences which are so prevalent, the current so-called modern approach, you know, starts thinking maybe we have to provide the same set of opportunities to everyone, make all of them equal in everything that we do. This has become a very big thing and uh, there is a very strong arguments one can get into uh, very uh, touchy issues. I'm not getting into any of those. Merely, I want to tell you that the current approach is to uh, drive the society into one of rights and demands based living, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Simple common sense says, while you know this may be an approach, people are trying it today. One thing that we all know is, if you have to start with an understanding that you know all are same, all are to be equal, and so on, then the solution starts with what I may call it as common minimum program. So that's the only way you can accommodate all of them. We have enough experience that we see in today's society. You know, it may be in the form of government interventions. It may be, you know, regulatory. So many things are happening. Now, it is in this broad framework we need to understand Shankaracharya. Because 
the entire idea of advaita siddhanta is to address this very problem the very idea of advaita siddhanta is to actually handle this now if you really get into the depth of advaita siddhanta and ask what is happening here how do we actually look at it so if you read shankara's work as uh, you know shankara acharya told us just now shankara acharya had drawn it is all shruti pramana he all his arguments are from the shruti only it's all bringing the uh, deep concepts in the shruti and make it a very applicable idea to all of us so if you look at that the solution the way shankara acharya looked at this whole uh, issue is not all are same not all are equal that's one method but it is different it is all are unique the first idea is all are unique and where does it come from it comes from the shruti the trigunatmika jagat the prakriti and the purusha which creates the world of multiplicity is a very strong argument that sri shankaracharya brought in all his uh, works so first of all all are unique all are unique is very different from saying all are same because all cannot be same the five fingers are not same you have the thumb which is shorter you have the middle finger which is longer and so on how can you have all things being same but all all have a unique role to play so all are unique that is one broad strong underlying theme which we actually see the second most important thing is all come from a single source in fact that is the pinnacle of advaita siddhanta all come from a single source and are nothing but a manifestation of the single source that is what it is now this is very easy to say at one level now the question is how do you reconcile these two aspects of of, of the reality moment you say all are unique all these contrasts and differences will come but then when you say all came from a single source and are nothing but a manifestation of the single source then there is a method by which this three has two has to be understood in fact the way i see it a great amount of work done by shankaracharya can from this perspective i am talking you know one can see that he found a way to address these and reconcile these let's start first of all with all are unique every vyakti is unique so therefore unique means there is a certain difference so question is so what the first implication of this position is individual is a unit of analysis whatever one has to talk about you cannot you know you know put all of them together and then say so lot of acharya's messages are targeted at an individual level so the individual is a unit of analysis and many things so you cannot order an individual to do this or do that but certainly one can make individuals reflect on certain realities of life one can make an individual reflect on one's own nature one's own position one's own strength and one's own goal in life so this is the strongest uh, undercurrent of uh, bhagavad pada's work you can make them you can create a very appealing pitch you can make people understand that i am so unique but this uniqueness means there is a way by which one has to each individual has a trajectory to follow that is the first implication you cannot you know do what in modern terms what we call it as a cookie cutter so today in india every student has to become an engineering student every student after an engineering should get into a software company or do an mba that is not what it is each one of us thousand flowers must blossom that is a very thriving society that's a very thriving concept even at an individual level therefore each individual has a trajectory to follow and this idea has been taken in very different dimensions you know one can use the entire uh, idea of karma you know the agami you know uh, sanchita agami and uh, karma prarabdha karma and so on so how do you understand that how do you you know handle that part of it 
make sense of the trajectory in which we are following, the way we can change our trajectory in our as we go forward, plenty of work you will find in Shankaracharya's Bhagavad Pada's work. Each one is unique. And since each one is unique, each one has unique tastes and preferences. And that's where, as Shingari Acharya just now very beautifully said, that there is a large corpus of prayers on multiple gods. Because each one of us have a different thing. You know, somebody wants bhakti, Shankara Acharya will, will beautifully, you know, uh, provide a, a way to travel on the path of Ankolakam Nijabija Santati Ayaskanto Palam Suchika Sadvim Naija Vibum Latakshituruham Sindhu Sarit Vallabam. That's how he starts. Five different examples he gives and then establishes Bhakti. Gabire Kasare Vishati Vijane Gora Vipine Vishale Shaile Che Kusumartam Brahmati Kusumartam Jatamati. He says, people are going all over the deep forest uh, to look for flowers to offer to the God. He says, offer your, the, the flower that we have in the form of your heart. So like this, you know, different people need different ways of uh, pursuing their own trajectory. So Shankaracharya created large corpus of prayers on multiple gods. And that is why this whole idea of Shanmata Stapakacharya, he is a Shanmata Stapakacharya, Adityam, Ambikam, Vishnum, Gananatham, Chamaheshwaram, five of them, and the Kaumaram. The six-fold worship and a particular way one can do the Puja Vidana. Nagaraji was alluding to it in his opening remark. Even today, there is a Panchayat and a Puja. All these are nice mechanisms Acharya Bhagavad Gita has left with us. Why? Because each one of us have our own taste. And unless we are able to follow that, our path of trajectory, our path of evolution will be stunted. I should not be doing what I, you know, am not made for. Only by going in the wind of what I am, I can evolve. Therefore, he created all those institutions to help this journey. So I'm not going to get into all these details because Shingeri Acharya so beautifully explained this uh, so vividly. And Nagaraji also gave a good uh, translation of that. But the point is that all these, a whole lot of uh, this uh, work that you will find in Shankaracharya's uh, large corpus, which essentially has recognized that all of us are unique and that uniqueness is also so beautifully explained. His definitions of what, uh, you know, uh, 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 Sattva, Rajas and Tamas and Viveka Chudavani, if you see, the Vikshepa Shakti and the Avarna Shakti that he talks about. How all these gunas play out and how do they actually manifest? All those ideas you will find because that is very important. That we should understand our unique nature. We should understand what this unique nature is made of so that there is a possibility of morphing it, changing it so that we want to become better into something else and so on. So there is a whole lot of source descriptions. The second thing is the core of Advaita Siddhanta and that is all come from a single source. In fact, oneness is the greatest vision of life and the only way we can understand that is to dip deeply into the Advaita Siddhanta. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya Jivo Brahma Naparaha Anena Vedyam Shash Shastram Iti Vedanta Dindimaha he says, I am beating this drum of Vedanta by proclaiming, I am going to the rooftop and say, Brahma Satyam Jagan Vidya. What is the ultimate truth is only Brahman. Jeeva ha Brahma eva na aparaha. Every one of us is nothing but the manifestation of that. So that single source, and again in Viveka Chodam, this he says in Brahma Jnana Vili Mala. That's where you find this shloka. In Viveka Chodam, he also says that, Brahma Satyam Jagan Vidya. Iti evam rupo vinishitaha, soyam nitya nitya vastu vivekaha samudhataha. He says, understand that the oneness is what for we should actually aspire to realize. And he goes on, he says, describes it in all his Dvaita Siddhanta, in Prakarna Granthas, in, even in Stotras you will find. For example, paripurnam anadyam antam. Anadhyantam, apramayam avikriyam, 
ஏகமேவாத்வயம் பிரம் நேக நானா அஸ்தி கிஞ்சன ந இக நானா அஸ்தி கிஞ்சன தெர் இஸ் நோ பாசிபிலிட்டி ஆஃப் மல்டிபிளிசிட்டி தட் யூ கேன் திங்க் ஆஃப் தட் இஸ் வாட் இட் இஸ் ஏகமேவ அத்வயம் பிரம் so this whole idea that despite all these differences so the, now the question is how do you see these differences in atma bodha so beautifully he says he says nano nano upadi visaya visha vashadeva upadi vashadeva nana upadi vashadeva jati varna ashramadaya atman aropita stoye rasa varnaadi bedavate you know you take water water has no properties but moment you put it in a red color bottle the water becomes red you know it looks like it's a red water you put it in a blue color bottle it becomes a blue water you take a you know a triangular bottle water looks triangle you put it in a square bottle water looks square you put it in a round bottle water looks round that's what he says aro atmani aropita so there is a substratum there is a karana and there is a karya okay atman aropita hai to ye rasavarnaadi bedavate just like this water which is nirguna in some ways has acquired a lot of guna so in the same way because of its association with different conditionings upadis such as caste color and position etc etc superimposed on this atman and you know it shows different flavor so all these the advaita siddhanta says while it is all unique and all of them on at the surface looks a little different but the fact is they are all from a very common resource so essentially what is shankaracharya bringing here while on the surface you will have beda bhava right but if you take advaita siddhanta very seriously and contemplate on what acharya is telling us what we will see is beda bhava must give way for brahma bhava that is ultimate goal that's why in his chatusutri the very opening he say kshetra kshetra gyo vishaya vishayino tama prakasha viruddha subhavayo the kshetra and the kshetra gya the field and the knower is like vishaya and vishayina the, the what is known and what is who is the knower and what is the uh, relationship between that tama prakashavat the relationship is like between darkness and light darkness and light cannot coexist you cannot say you know uh, uh, you know uh, where there is light there can be darkness they, they are mutually exclusive so tama prakashavat viruddha subhavayo so slowly shankaracharya brings this idea that depending upon the plane of your existence you will be in one of these two states either you will be in a beda bhava or you will be in a brahma bhava you cannot have light and darkness at the same time and all his work basically brings this idea so beautifully you know i think one of the beautiful most beautiful short piece that one can read is manisha panjaba i'll just take the first shloka ஜாகிரஸ்வப்னுஷுப்தி very clearly it drives all these avastha there is something behind all these <coughs> it is a single source ya brahmaati pipilikanta tanuhu right from brahma to that ant or that one cell the amoeba all of them in in all of them the same force that same vital force is actually radiating prota jagat sakshi that is the jagat sakshini saivaham nacha drishya vastu what i am seeing on the surface is not what i am i am that quintessential nature you know behind all these drida pragna one should develop that unwavering understanding and realization of that if if a person has understood that let him be a chandala let him be a tija he is my guru anisha pachakam will bring 
why and how one should understand the need for moving from an empirical world of multiplicity to a world of oneness. Now the question is, why do you need it? It is only when we develop the vision of oneness, compassion, empathy, accommodation of other views and ideas, which in Bhagavad Gita so beautifully, you know, Krishna says, Kshantihi. That is that attribute. Accommodating different, different views. All these will, will become a very natural corollary. So, you know, you cannot artificially make me believe all are same. Force me by choice or force me through a social uh, pressure. All those are very temporary. If I develop a sense of oneness, if I develop that vision of oneness, if I experience that vision of oneness by deep contemplation, then the, the society will be a very different society. Compassion will be a very natural force. Empathy will be a very natural uh, reaction to situations. Accommodation of other views and world of differences and all these will become very, very natural. That is why this is the only way we can do. All are equal, all are same, doesn't really take us there. It has its own challenges. Whereas all are unique, but all come from the same source. That is the binding force for social harmony. That is the binding force that we need. So therefore, Shankaracharya also reconciled these two realities. Because one can talk about these two things very differently. Now, how do you reconcile these two? That's why, you know, in his, in his, in his Gita Bhashya, in Upod Gata, he says, Dvivido Vedokto Dharmaha Pravritti Lakshano Nivritti Lakshanascha Jagataha Stiti Karanam Praninam Sakshat Abhyudaya Nishreya Sahetu we need both pravritti dharma and nivritti dharma. You cannot, you know, succeed and be very satisfied. I mean, you can't have a day's work, have eight-digit salary and then become a defeated person in life. It doesn't work. You can't be a bundle of diseases by, uh, you know, materially very sound, earning a lot of... That doesn't work. So therefore, he talks about two realities to our existence. That's the only way we can reconcile this apparent conflict. There are two realities of existence for every one of us. One is called Vyavaharika Satya. In this empirical world, we need differences. You cannot say because of Advaita, stone and rice are same. So let me cook one, one kilogram of stone and have my lunch. You can't do that. That, is, uh, that means we haven't understood Advaita Vedanta. Swamiji also so beautifully talked about it. There is a Vyavaharika Satya. When it comes to the world of empirical world, Transactions have to happen because we have our own trajectory to follow. We have our own karma to exhaust. There you see the differences, but you stop that. That is called pravritti dharma. Then you have to go for paramarthika satya. We all have to evolve. We all have to, you know, uh, develop a, a higher state of our existence and reach that vision of oneness. And that is called paramarthika satyam. And that is called nivritti dharma. He says that is why Shankaracharya in his Upod Gata or Bhagavad Gita talked about this. So through this, Shankaracharya very beautifully brings a fundamental idea to us. What is the goal or purpose of life? Now today, you ask a lot of well-educated people, a lot of people in the Western society, you know, they may, you know, in terms of dharma and what is this dharmic life and so on. A lot of people will say, you know, you have to be very simple. You have to be very truthful. You have to be very kind to others. You have to help others. You have to develop that empathy and all that. Now, how do we naturally develop these tendencies is another question. I have already spoken about it. But in the context of the contrast that and the adversaries that we talk about. But the question is, is this enough? Is it, is it the goal of life? Is it all we need? Because a lot of uh, educated people seriously think that you speak truth, be simple, help others. That's all is what is required in life. But if you read Shankara's work, you don't get that. You don't get that idea. This is not enough. Let me take an example. A lot of people think that you have to keep your house very neat, tidy, you know, uh, you know, dust all of them on a weekly twice, clean everything, you know, let the chair and table be in place, you know, keep your showcase. These are a lot of people spend their time. Suppose you keep your house so well, but then you don't have a culture of even inviting people. You don't have the culture of even treating people very nicely when they come. You think you are in a different kind of a plane. What avail is this? In the same way, being good, 
being you know uh, truthful kind to others are very important but that's not the ultimate goal shankaracharya has many of his words i'll take only one shloka chittasya shuddhaye karma natu vastu upalabhyate na vastu upalabhyate vastu siddhi vicharena na kinchit karma koti bihi shankaracharya acharya in his anugraha bhashana alluded to it that chitta shuddhi is what for we should work so that is only a necessary condition for evolution not sufficient condition for evolution vastu siddhi vicharena that jnana prapti hi will happen only when we are able to handle the world of dualities in such a way that we our chitta shuddhi happens and once our chitta shuddhi happens there is a great amount of atma vichara that is required for which shankaracharya has provided enormous amount of uh, details to us so so shankara bhagavad pada has given uh, you know a voluminous corpus he has left with us you have the prasthanatraya bhashya for the brahma sutra the shopanishad and bhagavad gita you have a whole lot of prakarana granthas i would say uh, singeri acharya ji also uh, acharya also actually uh, brought it i would say manisha panchakam and uh, sadhana panchakam such a beautiful pieces to start vedo nitya madhiryata anta duditam karma sunishtiyata 40 instructions in five shlokas that is a very good way for us to say how do we handle the world of duality the world of contrasts and differences and go up to that uniqueness that uh, so that reconciliation of these two so beautifully you will find in shankaracharya work in prakarana grantha of course you have a lot of devotional stotras for the devata kshetras kashi panchakam on rivers yamuna panchakam ganga panchakam everything is world god for us this is the greatest repository of shankaracharya which we should uh, uh, actually get into as i told you that all these granthas will help us develop this vision of oneness while we fully recognize that the world has a lot of contrast world has a lot of adversarial kind of things but we will be able to handle all of them we will be very good in our uh, you know uh, 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 world of uh, action because differences are required so we will uh, do that but then we'll also move to paramarthika satya and develop that vision of oneness and we will create a great society a lot of compassion lot of shanti lot of empathy and that is what is one dimension of shankaracharya i thought i will take this opportunity today to just talk about this particular aspect of shankaracharya he is a great uh, uh, you know social thinker and given us such wonderful ideas for us to make use of it contemplate and create a great society which is worthy of emulation i think uh, if we follow the sampradaya if we follow the teachings of shankaracharya seriously the world will be a better place i think with these few words let me once again thank uh, indika moksha for this opportunity on uh, adi shankara jayanti they have uh, been given an opportunity it is a great uh, uh, blessing and uh, thank you for this opportunity and with this let me close here thank you thank you very much uh, professor mahadevan ji for your lucid insightful and uh, comments uh, especially uh, your advice are very practical regarding how to uh, you know negotiate with diversity by anchoring to the oneness without even denying diversity i mean that that, that is a way uh, very very important uh, at, at a political atmosphere which wants to destroy diversity in order to attain oneness so i think this is a very important message uh, thank you very much sir nagraj ji do you have any final comments uh, hari ji nagraj ji anybody hi kiran gar thank you thank you very much uh, madhavan garu thank you very much for that uh, very i would say very timely uh, message as uh, nitin also pointed out globally the the push for dai what they call as dai but now they change the spelling to dei which is diversity Uh, inclusiveness and uh, equity, and there is a huge 
push and the division in the society that we are facing today is largely because they have not understood the importance of pluralism i would say that rather than die or dei the focus should be on pluralism now i want to use the word which my friend coined sunny coin is dharmic pluralism pluralism is not just about diversity and inclusion and equity but it is about everybody having a say in the matter it is also about when i say dharmic pluralism it is also about reverence it's also about the sacred what you have just outlined in terms of the vision for oneness that one has to develop while appreciating the uniqueness of one and all is exactly this kind of a pluralistic society that we should strive to build i'm very very uh, happy that you have touched upon this because this is a very very important goal and vision of indica and indica moksha is that we want to see a pluralistic world rather than a dei world we want to see we believe that peace will be an effect if we are pluralistic and pluralism will come when you have vision of oneness and an understanding of differences and 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 you have so beautifully articulated uh, uh, bhagwat pada's vision and we are very grateful to you for uh, your uh, inaugural address thank you so much thank you hari ji uh... i uh, thank you again uh, professor mahadevan uh, for uh, the wonderful comments uh, nagraj ji do you want to add something no no just that uh, actually the uh, message uh, by harikiran garu has succinctly uh, brought out the sanatana dharma's approach in contrast to the colonial and uh, eurocentric ideas all this dai has all the european roots in it uh, so the alternative comes from the oneness uh, in our sanatana dharma that was succinctly brought up thank you thank you again everyone uh, tune in to our first individual talk in the evening uh, we have a wonderful talk uh, titled practicing karma yoga in everyday life by swamini parapratyananda ji and uh, follow us on our facebook twitter and instagram for more details about upcoming talks uh, with this uh, we conclude the inaugural session of global festival of oneness i hope you all will be there with us throughout the month in celebrating shankaracharya celebrating sanatana dharma shri gurubhyo namaha